Despite a slight dip in the first quarter, the central bank is still projecting solid 7 to 8 percent growth in gross domestic product and a 2.5 percent inflation rate by the end of the year. The numbers rank the Philippines as the second fastest growing economy in Asia after China. Banco Central Governor Titanco says to spur further growth, the Philippines is ramping up infrastructure spending, using tax dollars and public-private partnerships to build new roads, bridges, air and seaports. The country expects to spend up to 5 percent of GDP on infrastructure by 2016. That's going to be a very significant amount. And, uh, and uh, it is only, you know, uh, right that the government uh, ramps up uh, infrastructure spending because in the medium to long term, what is really important for us is to lay down uh, the basis for uh, sustained growth. Uh, we need to expand the absorptive capacity of the economy uh, through uh, the improvement of uh, the infrastructure to support uh, sustained growth uh, in the medium to long term. And this is the direction uh, that the government is taking. Many credit President Benigno Aquino's crusade against government corruption and inefficiency for the improving economy. But now it's that same government bureaucracy that will need to push through nearly 20 billion U.S. dollars worth of infrastructure projects. The challenge now is uh, for uh, these government departments to execute uh, uh, the different projects uh, that, uh, for which funding is, uh, has already been set aside. And, uh, actually, the money is there, uh, ready to be used. Also sparking a rise in foreign direct investment are recent banking reforms. Under the new law, foreign banks can own up to 100 percent of uh, a Philippine bank. Of course, uh, this would uh, bring in uh, additional investments in two forms. One, the capital that will be brought in by the bank that is setting up uh, operations in the Philippines. And two, the investments that will be brought in by the customers of those banks. Titanco says tourism could be yet another growth engine. The government wants to spread the visitor industry to other parts of the very diverse country. There are many uh, beautiful places to see in the Philippines. Uh, the challenge is how to bring you know, the visitors, the tourists, quickly to these uh, destinations. And the government is building uh, the necessary infrastructure uh, to make that possible, uh, building airports, seaports, uh, roads. Uh, and the private sector is, uh, is uh, contributing in terms of uh, developing new uh, resorts. Tutanka believes that not even some looming geopolitical forces can derail Philippine growth. For example, Tutanko downplays so-called Chinese territorial aggression in the surrounding South China Sea. Relations with China on the economic side uh, continue to grow. Uh, trade is uh, improving. Uh, tourism is uh, expanding. Uh, investments are also increasing. So in terms of the economic relations between the Philippines and China, this continues to, to grow and improve. Also ahead is a potentially volatile presidential election, as Aquino's term ends in less than a year. But Tatanko is confident that even a change in an administration will not slow down growth. Uh, we believe that what is important is uh, uh, the, uh, it's going to be the continuity of the reforms and the policy trusts uh, that have been uh, implemented and are being planned, others are being planned for implementation uh, in the coming years. I think here uh, many of the major reforms, uh, you know, the structural reforms are already embedded in uh, laws. So these are not uh, going to be easy to reverse. For all of the positive economic developments in recent years, though, the Philippines is still plagued with lingering widespread poverty. Titanco says conditions have improved for many of the country's millions of poor, but he concedes much more needs to be done. While it is not part of our mandate, we believe that uh, this is an issue uh, where the central bank can also help. Tutanko says the Banco Central's advocacy programs include financial inclusion, education, 
and consumer protection.